It's the beginning of September and what I believe is the real fourth quarter of any year. Now you may not have realized this, but I was like counting weeks on my giant wall calendar over here because I'm a weirdo like that. <laughs> And did you know there are, in most years, almost exactly 12 weeks between Labor Day to Thanksgiving? And we all know, even maybe we won't admit it, that not a whole lot of productive work gets done during the holidays, and that's good. It's time for a break. It's time to spend time with your loved ones and, you know, doing all of those holiday things. And so when we think about, like, the last real productive stretch of the year is going to happen between the Labor Day holiday and the Thanksgiving holidays. So... In this video, I want to talk to you about really focusing on what you want to get done in the last true productive quarter of any year so that you can set yourself up for a successful start to the new year. Sounds a little wild to be talking about new year at the beginning of September, but this is your like 12 week window before the holiday start to get some really cool things done. My name is Matt Ragland, and I help creators and everyday doers be more productive and profitable with simple systems and personal lessons learned from 10 years as a side hustler and on the front lines of the creator economy at some really cool companies, including ConvertKit and Podia. If you're brand new here, please go ahead and subscribe and ring the bell if you want to get notifications. And let's strap in for the rest of the video. This video is going to include references to many other longer videos I've made about specific techniques and strategies. So feel free to check out those links and uh, cards at the end. Anywhere that you would look to normally find a link to a YouTube video, it's going to be included. But the first one that I want to tell you about from a strategy perspective is I want you to really be thinking about what is one like big project that you would like to have accomplished by the time that kind of Thanksgiving, Black Friday, beginning of December rolls around because you have about 12 weeks to get that done right now. And the concept, the strategy that I want you to use to break down that big picture goal into something that you can focus on every week and every day is a technique called QMWD. And that stands very simply for quarter, month, week, and day. Is to think about what is the goal that I have for the quarter? What are three milestones? What's a milestone that I can hit each month? So three milestones that will get me to that quarterly goal. And then you can break down every single monthly milestone into these four weekly deliverables, okay? So think about what do I need to do every week in order to get to my monthly milestone? And if I do that for three months in a row, then I'm going to naturally achieve a, a successful outcome to the goal that I have set. Now, sometimes the 12 weeks can still feel pretty overwhelming. And so what I would encourage you to do, if you have a bigger goal that you think you will take you 12, 10 to 12 weeks to accomplish, then all I would do to get started is just think about what is a milestone on the way to that goal that you can achieve in a month. So take something that is three months and really just focus on what you can do in the next month to make it successful or to get you a little further along on that goal. Then look at each week and say, what do I need to have accomplished at the end of each week that will help me achieve this mini goal or this milestone goal at the end of the month. That's a really good start for thinking about how you can be productive over longer periods of time. Now, here's an important point. I don't want you to feel bad if you find it challenging to achieve a quarterly goal. I don't even want you to feel bad if you find it challenging to achieve a goal that might take you a month to do. A lot of people have trouble with this and that's okay. And so what I normally recommend people doing, and what I want you to think about, is really focusing on the span of a week. I want you to think about how can I have the most productive week ever, all right? Because what you'll realize and what you need to get used to is this concept that if I just stack one productive week on top of the other, then eventually I will have a really productive month, a really productive quarter, and a really productive year. It's a really fascinating way of looking at how you can compound productivity and creativity over longer periods of time just by focusing on having a productive day and a productive week. I tend to focus on like the one or two goals that will make the week productive and successful because sometimes you have a bad day and you don't get the things done that you want. But usually, if you protect your time, 
you can get one specific goal done every single week. And you may not think that that is enough, but think about what a year would be like, what a quarter, or like these next 10 to 12 weeks would be like if you got like the one important thing done every week. And then at the end of the year, you look at it and say like, I got like 50 plus important work weeks done. Like that would change everything about how you work. That would change your goals. That would change your mindset. You would realize that you're the type of person that can get things done and stack these productive weeks on top of each other. So if quarterly feels too big, if monthly even proves to be a challenge, then I want you to just focus on having a really productive, maybe your most productive week ever. Now I have two more little systems that will help you have a really productive week. And I have another video about this, so I won't go into like super long detail about it, but it's this idea, this concept of the gap preview and the wrap review. Okay, let me break those both down for you real quick. The gap preview is starting your week and saying, what is my goal? What is the one goal that would make this week productive and successful that I would feel happy about accomplishing? Once you have that defined, I want you to A, so we got G as the goal, the A are all the action steps. So once you define the goal, what are all the things you need to do to make it a success, to actually achieve the thing? And it may only be one thing, but go ahead and write that down. So what's the goal? What are the action items or the tasks that will help me achieve it? And then the P is for protecting the time. You have to be able to define time in your calendar, in your week, to say, this is when I'm gonna work on the action task that will allow me to achieve the goal. You see how that works? So it works backwards and forwards. We define the goal, we list the actions, and then we protect the time. Because when we protect the time to work on the actions, we'll almost always achieve our, a successful outcome of our goal. See how that works front to back? Now the other piece of having a really productive week is this concept of the wrap review. And it's a really simple like four, four prompts or four questions that as you respond to them naturally, kind of reflecting on the week, reviewing the week, that you're able to get a better picture of what actually happened. Now there's a really important distinction that I wanna make for you. And that is to review your week as a reporter and not as a judge. Most of us tend to review our work as a judge. We're like, you didn't do this right. You should have done this better. You didn't protect your time properly enough here. You didn't hit your goals. It's very judgmental that we are towards ourselves. Whereas what I would rather you do is approach it as a reporter. Be like, okay, well, Matt on Monday, speaking in the third person, Matt on Monday said that this was a goal for him. And as I reflect back on that and report back, he wasn't able to quite hit it. Now, that's different than being a judge, okay? So think of your review process as going through it more as a reporter or a researcher than someone who is judging your past self. So the four prompts of rap are number one, the W is for sharing your wins. So write down your wins, things that went well. The R, I've in the past talked about it as like, uh, what are the results of your goals that you set? But I also like thinking of it now as like a reflection. So what are your wins? And then just reflect back on the week. Again, continuing to think about like what went well, what could it kind of changed. We'll talk about that more in a moment. Wins, there's reflection slash results. And then the A, the A that I really like is alignment. So you're asking yourself, is the work that I did in alignment with the goals and the outcomes that I say matter to me, the work that I want to be doing? And then the P is to pivot. And so as you're reflecting, as you're talking about your wins, as you're thinking about does everything align, then you're like, okay, do I need to pivot any of my work going into next week? Was there a goal that I didn't hit that I need to like pivot and make uh, a, a higher priority? Is there a goal that I didn't hit because as it turns out, it's not that high of a priority so I can pivot away from it. So you're looking at wrapping up the week by saying what were my wins, reflections on the week itself, was my work in alignment with the goals and the work that I say matters, and then what kind of pivots do I need to make going into the new week? And when you answer those questions and start to plan your gap for the next week, you can use those pivots and reflections to be like, okay, this is how I need to plan my gap for the new week. I really like this framing and I really like thinking about how I can have a productive week because once I start to stack these productive weeks one right after another, then it's easy for me to see like, okay, I have 12 weeks available. How do I want to stack and combine different weeks together to have like 
these 12 things that I knock out that'll be important to me. Maybe there's something that's gonna take me like five or six weeks. So I'm gonna stack five, six, you know, good weeks right here about this particular goal. So you can you can change this up any way that you want. You could have like three monthly goals, you could have one 12 week goal, you could have two six week goals. There are really kind of healthy ways of looking through all of this. But I wanted to just highlight this time frame for you, for all of us, because often I get into Q4, like after after Thanksgiving, I'm like, what do I need to cram in before <laughs> before Christmas starts? And that always feels really weird and awkward and unhealthy. And so I want you to think about something that I'm focusing on is it's the first full week of September and until we go into the last full week of November, that's about 12 solid weeks. It's the last, like I think, real focused, productive quarter of the year that we can get some cool, productive, important work done without it feeling like it's overwhelming or conflicting with family time or other things that you just like kind of naturally want to take a breath towards the end of a new year and going into a new going into a new year. So uh, thank you so much for watching this video. This is a, I, I planned on it being a relatively quick one. We'll see how it comes out in editing, but thank you so much for watching all of this and getting to the end. Make sure that you uh, subscribe if you enjoyed this video and just kind of how I communicate. And you can also sign up for my email newsletter. So go to mattraglin.com slash email something. The link is in the description below and <laughs> you'll be on my email newsletter. There's about like, as of this recording, about 7,000 people on that newsletter. So it's a really cool way for us to connect. And I send like at least one email every single week. So we'd love to see you on there as well. Thank you for subscribing and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.